What's up everybody, my name is Mac and today I'm here with a review of Hasbro's Mortal Kombat Johnny Cage G.I. Joe. Uh, this came out around 96. Uh, it was done at the end of the of the G.I. Joe line. And was made alongside uh, a Street Fighter line of, of G.I. Joe's. The only difference between these and the Street Fighter ones is... While the Street Fighter one was under the banner of G.I. Joe, these are their own thing. Uh, right here you have some art of Johnny Cage, mentioning his combat cannon, uh, the Mortal Kombat Dragon logo, and there you have Johnny in the packaging. In the back you have a, a quick bio on what Mortal Kombat is, all the figures that were available at the time. And little adverts for Kano and Reptile. Uh, down here you have a quick bio on Johnny Cage. Instructions for the Dragon Cannon. And yeah, that's about it. So here we have Johnny Cage out of the packaging. Uh, he stands about 3 and 3 quarter inches tall. Um, he does look a lot like how he does in the game. You know, with the cold kickboxer motif. Um, here's a closer look. You know, he has his little sunglasses. Now, from my understanding, um, the Mortal Kombat and Street Fighters figures recycled a lot of parts from the G.I. Joe line. Uh, from Johnny, I really can't tell. You know, the only parts that really look recycled would be the chest right here. That looks to be like road pig's um, chest. Uh, the head for a fact I know it's all brand new sculpt. Cage has uh, the standard uh, vintage G.I. Joe articulation. He has bendable knees. Uh, bendable elbows. Uh, rotation in the head where he could look left, right up and down um, he's also he also has the o-ring design so the torso and the legs are held together with an o-ring uh, if you are gonna buy one of those loose I, I have to warn you that over time the o-rings tend to dry out and rot and they tend to be very fragile or over time break apart on their own uh, however, it is very easy to fix. On the back of this figure, there is a screw hole. Easy to disassemble, easy to replace the O-ring. And yeah. With Johnny's articulation, I'm able to recreate his shadow kick. Unfortunately, um, the, ball, the, the ball joint and the O-ring do not give him enough flexibility to do his split punch. Uh, that's when he does the split and punches the the opponent in the balls. Um, however, he does have pretty good articulation. Um, it's not hindered in any way. Well, besides the O-ring hindering the splits, uh, you could recreate a lot of his other moves. And fun fact about Johnny Cage's appearance in the first Mortal Kombat game and in this figure. Uh, Mortal Kombat originally started off as a video game adaptation of the movie Bloodsport. However, um, Midway Games was not able to obtain the license for Bloodsport and the project fell through. So when they started working on Mortal Kombat, they decided to make Johnny Cage based on Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's why he wears the, um, the kickboxer motif. It is similar to how Van Damme dressed in the Bloodsport movie. Now, Johnny comes with a few weapons. He comes with his combat cannon right here, uh, the missile for it, a hook sword broadsword combination, which is very cool looking. Um, and he also comes with his dagger right here. Now, one thing I do have to have to warn about is the fact that they're they're molded in a gold plastic, a gold-ish plastic. Uh, that makes them very susceptible to GPS, which is a gold plastic syndrome. Over time, you know, they are going to become more brittle, more fragile, uh, and can break very easily. 
there have been instances of figures with uh, GPS breaking on their own even if displayed on a shelf so that is one thing you need to worry about uh, another reminder is when putting them onto the figure to watch out uh, sometimes these figure accessories are a bit larger than the actual hands and trying to force anything into the hand could lead to the thumbs of the figure snapping off I know a lot of old secondhand Joes that I had as a kid had that issue from the previous owners trying to shove guns and such into the hands. So here we have Johnny with his weapons. Um, as I did mention earlier, I try to be careful when putting them into his hands. I try to avoid the putting a lot of stress into the hand to avoid breaking off the thumb. And I try to avoid putting stress on the weapons themselves to keep them from breaking. As I did say, they have they suffer from GPS and they are they are a lot more easier to break than you know your average gi joe type weapon i gotta say with the weapons he does look pretty good he holds them very well you know i don't gotta worry about you know them falling out one day and me losing the pieces uh one thing i have to say though i'm a little disappointed at the fact that they didn't give him a pair of nunchucks it just seems like johnny cage and nunchucks you know, being him being a Hollywood martial artist will make sense, but for whatever reason, they didn't include them. I know G.I. Joe at that time was added a lot of nunchuck accessories to their ninja and martial artist characters, so who knows. Now here's Cage with his uh, combat cannon. Um, one thing I have to war warn about the combat cannon is that at times it does become too top-heavy. Um, it took a few tries right now to get him to be able to hold the cannon. Most of the time he was falling over to the side where the cannon was. So, you know, just watch out for that if you ever intend to display him with the cannon. Honestly, the cannon is just there as a fun little gimmick for kids to play with. Uh, a lot of toy lines back in the day included spring activated or button activated gimmicks like that. Uh, not really something you would really want with a figure like this I mean it is pretty fun the, the launcher itself is pretty po damn powerful uh, it has a little button right here on the side you pull that upward and see you hear that that's how strong the the force of the, of the spring is I, I know I lost the the missile earlier testing it out because of how damn fast and how damn strong it hit the wall and everything Overall, I'm going to give Johnny a uh, 9 out of 10. Uh, he does have a very close likeness to his video game counterpart, which is something that can't be said about the, a lot of the G.I. Joe Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat figures. Uh, great articulation. Nothing is hindered by gimmicks or by, or by poor design choice. Uh great sculpt overall you know he's one of the best out of the series